Welcome back everyone. Today's video is a fanfiction called Devil's Glory by the author at 180 underscore Kreisel link to author's profile will be in the description. Here is the proof I had gotten permission. Alright as always the links are in the description so make sure to check out the other stories. Amid the starlight was the gentle glow of the moon, a glimpse of it could serenade anyone like a song and put them at ease. A boy with short brown hair not older than seven went out to buy some sweets at a nearby store without telling his parents. Arigato, Ji-chan, now best be careful young man. The boy nodded his head and quickly took off to the direction of his house. He was almost there when something caught his eye, a ginger-colored kitten adorning a red ribbon on its tail. Meow. It took off running when it saw him coming closer. Hey, wait. He followed it for a few minutes and ended up losing sight of it. Where did it go? The young boy was about to give up, but then he heard a high-pitched mule nearby. He was at first against the idea of going after it. TL just be quick. He felt a knot in his stomach and tightly clutched the bag of sweets. He ran towards the sound and ended up in the park. The bag was unable to stay longer in his grasp when he dropped it almost immediately after seeing the horrid sight in front of him. The cat he was following earlier is bathing in its own blood, its small frame now possesses a hole in it. Ah, he fell on the ground with a loud thud. Two figures stood before him with an indifferent look. A man wearing a gray trench coat of era white dress shirt with matching ascot, black pants, shoes, pair of gloves and a black fedora beside him is a woman an inch shorter than him with a buxom figure wearing a maroon trench coat top with a wide collar a matching miniskirt and black heels the woman was holding a light spear that pierced the kitten hum you were right don this foolish boy did come to us the woman that spoke kicked the bloodied kitten away the brown haired boy slowly backed away from the two clearly terrified w what do you want with me the guy named Donasik summoned forth a blue light spear. Die. He managed to stand up and was about to make a run for it when he felt himself weakening and fell once more on. The ground. He placed a hand on his abdomen and lifted it. A beautiful intoxicating red coated his hand. Okasan. Otusan. I'm sorry. He coughs out blood and his eyes starts to lose life. Your existence poses a threat to us. Blame God for planting a sacred gear inside your body. The two vanished and left him there to die, he didn't understand a word they said and felt regret, hopelessness and excruciating pain from the blow. I.F.I. could be born again, I.I. He didn't get to finish when the darkness already consumed him. Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo paced back and forth inside their living room, trying their best to stay positive that their son will be back soon. Maybe we should call the police. Calm down, honey. Maybe he just went out to buy something. But he has been gone for an hour already, where would a child go at this hour? I know but we can't make any rash decisions, we can go look or call for help if he's not home after a few more minutes. Mr. Hyodo embraced his worried wife, both praying that their son is alright. Sirzak Sama, a handsome man who seems to be in his early twenties has shoulder length crimson red hair and blue green eyes. What is it? He didn't take his eyes away from the person he deeply cared for that is lying on the bed that is rather feverish which happens to be his sister. It was just for a moment then he turned to the caller and gave his attention. Is there something wrong? A young woman appearing to be also in her early twenties with long silver hair that is in a long braid on each side with small blue bows at the ends, while the rest is let down which ends in twin braids and has gray eyes. She was wearing a blue and white maid outfit with long sleeves and a white maid headband over her head with red lipstick. Since he didn't really thought of the possibility that his sister might be half awake, he let his wife named Grafia Lucifuge tell him, Fallen angels has been spotted in the human world, in Kuo town of Japan. They have been doing unnecessary things. She gave him a grim expression, he got the message and let out a heavy sigh. I understand. The man closed his eyes and his hand found its way to his face and pinched the bridge of his nose. Don't worry, she's going to be okay soon, she went behind him and gave his shoulders a squeeze. He kissed his sister's forehead and stood up from his seat and took the hand of his wife and intertwined their fingers. They left the room and immediately went somewhere. Kuo huh, 
A young Rias Grimori fluttered her eyes open and slowly sat up and put a hand on her forehead. Maybe I can help Onisama, considering it's my fault that he has been neglecting his job. She went to her closet and changed into casual set of clothes and silently tiptoed out of the room. Where are you going young lady? Oh Oka-sama, so, H was just going for a fresh air. Really, are you feeling okay now? She went nearer to her daughter to feel her temperature. Your fever do seem to have went down. Can I go? TLL come back as soon as I can. She gave her mother a reassuring look. Fine, now run along. She embraced Rias and ruffled her hair, the older woman then left. The crimson-haired beauty celebrated in her head and asked some of the maids the whereabouts of his older brother. Seems like he already went to the human world. She held out her right arm into the air and generated a red magic circle with the Grimori crest in the center. Here goes. She was enveloped in a bright crimson light and was instantly teleported into Kuo town. Where am one? Did I messed up? She doesn't know where she is at the moment, since it's has only been a few times she went here in the human world and haven't explored much. Walking around as she looked at the houses with no light on but there were still a few. Till take this opportunity to look around. She couldn't help but feel nervous with no one around, and thought that it was a bad idea to go alone. Entering the park, a slight breeze rustles the leaves making them fall to the solid ground one by one. The air was cool, the beams of moonlight glowing on her skin. Flowers are vast, and they conceal the freshly cut green grass. Not one human was present. This scenery made my walk worthwhile. The cool breeze continues to touch her bare skin making her a little cold. She ended up in front of a Baroque-style fountain made of stone and marble with two medium-sized waterfalls on each side. Rias looked up at the mesmerizing starry sky with a content smile as she listens to the sound of the water, until her smile vanished when she smelled something unpleasant wafting in the air. She raised her guard up and frantically looked around, trying to FND where the smell is coming from. The young Grimori ran around the fountain and almost fell to her knees when she came across a dead body. Oh no, at the back of her mind, she thought that it was partly her fault that the boy ended up dead. In front of her looks like a young boy with the same age as her or younger, she inspected the body and came to a conclusion that it has been only a few minutes since he died. What should I do? An idea suddenly popped into her mind and decided to do it. As a high class she is capable of gathering her own servants into her peerage up to 15 which are represented by each piece. In a chess game, crimson colored hair, darker than ripe strawberry, it was the first thing he noticed when his visions came back, it baffled him that he came back to life. I thought I died, it was like she read his thoughts. I believed a fallen angel killed you, I'm really sorry for what happened to you. I.H. She started to tear up, surprising the young boy and even herself. P please don't cry, it doesn't suit you, while still lying down, he lifted his hand with the one without a trace of blood in. Brushed her tears away and placed it on her cheek. Rias blushed at his action and leaned on to his touch it calmed her in an instant and felt safe with him, it's their first time meeting but his mere presence screams something. Odd about him, there was this fluttering feeling inside him and shrugged it off when he suddenly felt himself weakened by the second, trying to stay conscious as long as possible. May I know your name? It didn't take Rias a second for her to tell him her identity. W wait, you're a devil. Then that makes me a reincarnated devil. She nodded at him, quite surprised how calm he seems to be. She really thought he would be upset that she turned him into her kind. Are you not afraid of me? Issei shook his head but stopped immediately when he felt his head pound in pain. How about you? Your name? Goman. I should have told you first. Um, I'm Issei Hyodo and I want to thank you for saving me. Issei. Issei. His hand on her cheek went limp and fell down on the ground. He lost consciousness once again. What am I going to do now? She nuzzled his hair softly. Why don't you start by explaining to me why you are here, Rias? Eep. She squeaked. She abruptly stood up from her seating position and turned to face her older brother with his wife besides him. On Sama, I was going to look for you. Sirzex took a step closer to her and patted her head. If you thought I neglected my duty for you, you don't need to worry yourself about that. Your brother is just really careless, that's all. She pouted and removed his hand. Grafia, can you look for this boy's home? Certainly. She conjured up a magic circle and disappeared. 
I see that you revived him, is there a particular reason for that? Het's nothing, she looked away from him. He noticed the pink hue dusted on her cheeks and inwardly smiled. Are you really fine now? And how come you're here? Did mother let you? Yes I am and I told Oka-sama that I will just take a breather. And here you are, in the human world. You don't even have someone to guard you, you know how dangerous it is. Rias fought the urge to roll her eyes because of her brother's lecture like a mother but was thankful to have someone so caring. Don't worry I won't do it again, Zero Nisama. Good. Another cold breeze passed by them, making Rias shiver. We need to go home now little Rhea, before your fever recur. I understand but what about Issei? We'll take him home, Onisama. I was going to look for you. Sirzex took a step closer to her and patted her head. If you thought I neglected my duty for you, you don't need to worry yourself about that. Your brother is just really careless, that's all. She pouted and removed his hand. Brafia, can you look for this boy's home? Certainly. She conjured up a magic circle and disappeared. I see that you revived him, is there a particular reason for that? Het's nothing. She looked away from him. He noticed the pink hue dusted on her cheeks and inwardly smiled. Are you really fine now? And how come you're here? Did mother let you? Yes I am and I told Oka-sama that I will just take a breather. And here you are, in the human world. You don't even have someone to guard you, you know how dangerous it is. Rias fought the urge to roll her eyes because of her brother's lecture like a mother but was thankful to have someone so caring. Don't worry I won't do it again, Onisama. Good. Another cold breeze passed by them, making Rias shiver. We need to go home now little Rhea, before your fever recur. I understand but what about Issei? We'll take him home. As if on cue, Grafia appeared. Sirzak Sama. The said man nodded and took the boy in his arms while Rias held on to Grafia, making the silver-haired beauty crack a smile. Mr. and Mrs. Hiodo was about to call the cops when they heard the doorbell rang. Issei, Sirzex let them take the boy and gave them a smile. Thank you for bringing our little boy back, Mrs. Hiodo said whilst hugging her son. There's no need to thanks us, we are happy to help. The couple was first confused as to how they found their house and to what happened to Issei's previous clothes but then... They felt everything to be okay, believing the crimson-haired. Sirzex altered their memories as he told them a different story. Would you like to stay for a while? Thank you for the offer but we need to get going. They bid them goodbye and the couple thanked them once again. Mr. and Mrs. Hiodo tucked their son in bed and kissed his forehead. End of Chappie 1. Months has passed since that fateful incident that repeatedly sent him to this gruesome land of horror and revulsion. His ghastly death of a spectacle seems to be getting worse every night, leaving him desperately crying, his hands shaking uncontrollably and his mind screaming for the agonizing pain to stop as if he might die from it. He sat upright and placed a hand on his forehead, trying to ease the headache. The pain eventually stopped with the help of his friend. Partner, you alright? Yeah, thanks Deidre, I'm sure the pain will end. Issei looked down at his clenched fist. Why not now? He mumbled under his breath. Al in good time, the heavenly dragon decided not to say anything to him further and left him to his thoughts. As midnight comes trailing, a clear night illuminated only by the glint of starlight and the radiance of a bright moon letting him forget about every bit of his dreadful memory. His mind began to wander back to the night he met the dragon, days after his bloody death and reincarnation. He dreamt of him dying once again with no crimson-haired beauty in sight then the vast darkness slowly encompasses him. Not far from him is a pair of glimmering eyes. It made his skin crawl. WH who are you? A powerful aura and intense heat began to emit at the unknown source and soon flames made an appearance around. I am nay. He sweat dropped at the confusing answer and it scared him knowing that a powerful being is in front of him. What are you on about? Issei almost fell because of the sight before him a massive red western dragon. He also has red and golden spikes. Throughout his body, I just wanted to greet you, since we're FGHTING together as partners from now on. Partners, who are you? I'm getting confused here. I'm Srey you already know, considering your SMN art for your age. Don't you, partner? After that everything went black again. New white rays shine through the window, light filtered through his thin eyelids that awoken him from his slumber. He blinked a few times, 
in an attempt to help his eyes adjust to the illumination directed right at his defenseless figure. He turned to his clock and felt relief to see it's still a bit early for him to actually get up and greet his parents. That was one weird dream. That was not a dream, partner. Issei immediately got up and frantically looked around his room. H huh. Then he felt something on his left hand, a glowing green disc-shaped thing plastered on the back of his hand. A sacred gear, he suddenly remembered the fallen angel's words. He was desolated by remembering his death. I see that you remembered, yours is listed as one of the 13 Longinus. Longinus what? Top tier sacred gears that can be used to kill gods. And what you have is called the boosted gear that my very spirit resides in. H how did you end up as a sacred gear? When the three great powers, God and the angels, the fallen and the devils were fighting and in the midst of the war, there were two foolish dragons who started a big fight. They fought wildly on the battlefield. Why were they fighting anyway? They probably don't remember the reasons themselves. What troublesome guys. And unless something was done about those guys, the war couldn't continue, so the three great powers made a temporary truce to deal with the dragons. The two dragons fight was stopped, they went crazy with anger and lashed out at the leaders. They didn't think anyone should intervene with their fight, it was just payback, plain and simple. In the end, the two were cut into thousands of pieces and their souls were sealed within humans as sacred gears. Since then, the two have used humans as intermediaries to meet and fight, time and again. What are their names? Those two dragons are Diedrake and Albion. So I'm guessing you're Diedrake, right? His reminiscing halted to a stop when his alarm clock loudly blares its annoying sound, indicating the time for his meditation. He went to the center of his room and plopped down in an Indian position. Both of his foot is placed on the opposite thigh. Head and neck are in line with his spine. Issei closed his eyes as he deeply focuses on relaxing, the silence caressed his skin like a cool summer breeze, smoothing his soul and taking away every jagged edge. Asterisk asterisk. A second year high school student who just transferred with short brown hair and light brown eyes, he has a muscular and toned build with a height of 177 centimeters. Wearing Kuo Academy boys uniform, consists of a black blazer that he left open with white accents over long sleeve. Shirt with vertical linings, discarding the black ribbon and having few buttons down, a matching black pants, and black combat shoes. It was still so early in the morning that he decided to walk around town that he missed. The streets is as silent as IFIT ended in the night except for Issei's footsteps echoing. The sun is STLL resolutely below the horizon and the altitude is really cool. He just got back a few days ago with his parents after staying at the countryside with his grandparents for 10 years. Issei scanned the new buildings and stores around him, having the same familiar feeling he had back then whenever he strolls around. Feeling good, partner. Yup. He said popping the P and took some deep calming breaths. Diedrake was really glad that Issei is better compared to before. As what we have expected, there are a lot of them. Hope we won't bump into one. You're clearly asking for the impossible. If we ever encounter them, I'll just kick their asses. I'm not the same naive boy anymore. Both of them howled in laughter as Diedrake agreed with him. The two were talking about fallen angels that might be lurking around, waiting for the right time to strike and kill him once. More. He turned a corner towards the direction of his new school, the only reason he went back is because Kuo is where the crimson-haired beauty resides. Only a few students are present making him feel relieved and felt relaxed. He toured the large school around and stumbled upon the old school building. Rias Pav, I couldn't sleep well last night and woke up slightly earlier than usual so I prepared myself for school, something inside me. Tells me today is going to be different than any other, making me feel anxious and excited at the same time. I said my farewells to everyone in the house and walked to the direction of Kuo Academy. I can feel the stares of other people around me, some are whispering things that seems to be too good to be true. Hope this day goes well. As I heaved out a sigh, I suddenly felt a familiar aura radiating from somewhere. It made my heart race with anticipation. I put a hand on top of my chest, trying my best to calm the fast beating. When I made it in the old school building, I went to one of the wood paneled room that looks like an office and opened the window and looked outside. Under the bright sun its rays warm my skin, the leaves of the tree just below have that soft green and the ground is 
scattered with vivid blooms whose petals dance in the breeze. Then something caught my eye, more like someone, suddenly I can feel my heartbeat race once more. A boy with brown hair lying under the shade of the big oak tree with his eyes closed. I just stared at him that feels like forever but has only been a few minutes until I felt a hand on my shoulder. A. Akino, Ohio, the queen of my peerage just looked at me with worry. Is there something wrong? I asked, shouldn't I be the one to ask you that? M. What do you mean? I have been calling you multiple times earlier and you were just staring out. The window. M. Sorry, a lot of things are plaguing my mind right now. I glanced away from her sharp yet concerned gaze and walked towards my desk and looked at the papers. She seems to have noticed that I don't want to talk and left me be to prepare some tea. I drowned myself in reading reports and feedbacks from clients and signed papers that needed my signature. A loud ringing sound interrupted me from my work, signaling the start of homeroom. I once again looked out the window and felt somewhat disappointed when I didn't see him. Who is he? Do I know him? End of chappy 2. Mina San, Kanichiwa, a woman with silky straight black hair and deep brown eyes walked in, wearing a white blouse with a bow collar, black pencil skirt ending just above her knees and black ankle strap heels. To say she's beautiful is an understatement for someone her age. Everyone immediately went back to their respective seats and happily greeted her back. Today, someone new will be joining our class, she exclaimed excitedly. The thought of having a new student sent the occupants of class 3B in a frenzy. Come in Hyodo kun Their breath hitched and everything seems to be in slow motion. Issei casually walks in with his hands inside his pocket and a grin plastered on his face. Yo, I'm Issei Hyodo, 17 years of age, Ito. Due to certain circumstances I moved back here in Kuo. Nice to meet you, all. He awkwardly bowed a little and gave them a small wave of his hand. There was a moment of silence, they gawked at him in his overall appearance like model before their sensei broke it in. Directed for Issei to sit on the vacant seat at the back row. Their first few subjects bore him to death, sending him to sleep or just stare into nothingness. It was a good thing their sensei didn't notice him not paying attention. When lunchtime came, he was bombarded by girls asking him questions. Issei-san, would you like to join us for lunch? Please say yes. You have a really toned body, do you work out often? Do you have a girlfriend? What are your hobbies? Do you have a club in mind? I hope you join ours. Diedre couldn't help but laugh while Issei cursed him internally for mocking him. He shyly rubbed his nape as he glances away and his cheek starts to redden from the attention and immediately turned. His gaze back to them. He calmly answered their questions with only revealing a few things about him. The girls didn't bother hiding their disappointment but still happy knowing he's single and he agreed to eat together some. Other time, he stood up from his seat and put his hands in his pocket. And by the way, just call me Issei, no need for honorifics, he winked at them before walking away, their gaze is still on him. With hearts in their eyes. So smooth, partner, Diedreg said in Issei's mind. What can I say, I learned from you, Issei chuckled to himself. Just don't break too many hearts. Oh shut up Diedrake. He too laugh along the dragon and made his way to his destination and this time, he concealed his aura better to not get. Noticed by unwanted beings he plopped himself down the grass-covered ground and leaned against the trunk of the tree that shaded him from the hot. Son, it's safe to say they know you are here, considering you forgot to conceal your presence the moment you step into. This town Ogun, Tisk, I know that already Diedrake and I'm so stupid for it. I am happy that you know that you are also dumb. Issei let out a fake laugh and took out his bento from his pocket dimension and began to eat at a leisurely pace. Good luck then, I'm sure there will be one or two that will come for you today. Is that a bet? Better think twice because I don't think so. Their argument starts to get heated then Issei rambles on how it's impossible for someone to find him so soon. When he was still, talking mentally while shoving food in, he didn't notice a Kuo Academy student coming towards them. Except Diedreg noticed her presence. Partner. Diedreg called him and then his tone quickly took a turn. I won. Suck someone's ass. You lose. How come? He accidentally yelled aloud then he sets his bento aside and looks frustrated from losing so fast. I felt an odd presence earlier that seems to be coming towards us. Then a young woman with violet eyes having a slender body came a few minutes later prior to their fighting. She had long, 
Silky black hair down to her hips. You am hi, are you Issei Hyodo? H hi, since you lost the bet, ask her on a date. Are you serious? Very. Issei thought for a moment if he should but eventually gave in. Can I help you with something? Issei stood up and dusted his rear from the dirt. H Hyodo kun, are you seeing anyone at the moment? The unknown girl shyly glances away while fidgeting in place. And no, he cursed himself in the inside for stuttering. She perked up when she heard his answer. TM glad to hear that. Ask her out already, Diedrag said impediently. Getting to it, the girl excuses herself and apologizes for the interruption and was about to walk away when Issei grabs her wrist in a gentle hold. A hey, Anyo, may I know your name? Ah, Goman, I forgot to introduce myself, I'm Amano Yuma. Then Yuma-san, would you like to go on a date with me? EA, is it not okay with you? No, no, that's not it, of course I would love to. That's great, let's have it this Sunday. Yuma agreed and went for a hug. TM looking forward to it. She let go of him and immediately left. Damn you Diedrake, he grumbles under his breath. Good luck on your date, partner. But kidding aside, you felt her aura, right? Yeah, and that's the only reason why I agreed going on a date with her. His mind was scattered, genuinely nervous of the possible outcome of their date. He was a bit early, standing in front of their meeting place, occasionally checking his watch for the time. Issei-kun, his head shot up when he heard his name and gave the caller a smile. Hey, Yuma-san, sorry, did I keep you waiting? Oh no, I just got here. He held his hand for her to take and then they walked along the busy streets. Where are we going, Issei-kun? It's a secret he said with a matching cryptic yet playful tone. It took them a few minutes before stopping in front of what seems to be a fancy restaurant. Wow this place is beautiful. Glad you like it, he inwardly let out a sigh of relief. Even though this is all fake, he decided to go all out. Name sir, the man in front asked. Hyodo Issei, he scanned the booklet and saw Issei's reservation. This way sir, he led them to their table and served them drinks. I ordered in advance and I hope it's okay with you, you're not allergic to anything, are you? Oh don't worry, I'm not. At first, the atmosphere seems to be awkward but soon turned comfortable as they started to eat. They left the place after paying the bill and went for a stroll. An agitated Rias Grimori watches them while hiding behind a tree nearby, she didn't mean to intrude in their date, she just saw them going from shop to shop and felt the need to follow them. Are they together? She asked herself. The scene in front of her made her feel uneasy yet she kept following the two. Besides from the crimson beauty following them, there is also another one. Of course Issei noticed but kept his cool and let them be. As the day progresses and the sun about to set, Issei and Yuma went to the park. We had a lot of fun today. Yuma happily exclaimed. Yeah. Dot but, Issei stopped in his tracks and created a distance from one another. What's the matter? Issei-kun, shouldn't you be the one telling me? Don't try to lie and show your true self. Yuma's whole demeanor suddenly changed. So you already know huh, for how long? Issei nonchalantly shrugged his shoulders. Since the day we met. Then a pair of black feathered wings sprouted from her back, although short-lived, playing innocent lovey deve with you was fun, Issei-kun. Likewise, Yuma-san, he spoke in such a cold voice, sending shivers down her spine. She summoned forth a light spear and charged at Issei, while he just stood there waiting for the blow. Rhea's movements halted to a stop when she saw what was about to happen, she was about to bolt up right there when. Something unexpected shook her to her core. Yuma's light spear stopped inches away from Issei's heart. Not going to finish the job, he held the spear by the side and gently pushed it away, his hand was slightly burned from. The holy object. She hung her head low while trying her best to stop the tears from falling. H don't think I can. From the short time we spent together, you became someone as special to me. She doesn't know the reason herself, she just felt a little bit closer to him. Both Issei and Rias didn't know what to think of it, eventually losing a brain cell or two from what they heard. Issei was about to say something when someone familiar pulled her away and stabbed him on his abdomen. He clutched the bloodied wound and fell on his back. TM just gonna wait, till they leave. You're nothing but a disgrace to him, Rainier. 
A man in all black said while having a tight grip on her wrist while the other held a light blue spear, blood covering the tip. She tried to break free from the hold but couldn't. Issei. She screamed his name. Rias couldn't believe what she is seeing more infuriating and frustrating than what she heard earlier, she was frozen once. Again, after the so-called Amano Yuma got taken away by the other fallen, the crimson-haired beauty rushed towards Issei's. Location. No number number. You can't die again on me. She tore a part of her dress and applied pressure to the wound. Rias kept muttering the word, sorry, in a soft voice while tears are streaming down and even getting some of the blood on. Her, Diedrake, a little help here. The Welsh dragon complied and used a small amount of his ice powers to freeze Issei's bloody wound. Wh wa, how, Rias was clearly bewildered by this sudden occurrence. Issei lifted one of his hand and took strands of crimson hair. Crimson colored hair, darker than ripe strawberry, she blushed because of what he said and averted her gaze the other. Way, long time no see, Rias, he said, propping himself up using his elbows. She looked at him again and was met by his toothy bright smile. Rias didn't reply but moved a little bit more close to him and hugged him from the side, careful enough not to touch the wound. We better go. Issei Wobbly stood up with her help and conjured up a magic circle to transport them to his place. When they got there, Rias immediately asked for a first aid kit and patched him up. Are you sure you don't want to go to the hospital? Her eyebrows furrows in worry. Yeah, I'll be good as new in the morning. Just need to rest a bit, he said while striking a pose. Issei walks along the pathway to Kuo Academy, which each stride, a memory of yesterday comes passing through his mind. He was upset, since the incident yesterday brought him to another dreadful memory from the distant past yet he was ecstatic, knowing that the crimson-haired beauty remembered and helped him yesterday. Then he was taken back to the real world when a pretty young girl with long blonde hair and green eyes laid on the ground on her sides while rubbing her bottom. Why did he trip, she said with a pout. Kawai. Issei hastily shook his head, Mo. This is not the time for that. He mentally scolded himself her suitcase wide open with clothes everywhere around her he immediately ran off towards her and lended a hand for the blonde to take. Miss, are you all right? Thank you. Issei gently hoisted her up and awkwardly let go of her hand when he caught himself holding it longer than necessary. S sorry. He then noticed her white veil being blown by the wind. One sec. He said and chased the veil. After a few seconds of fighting against the wind, he managed to return it to the blonde. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. The blonde nun started to fiddle with her fingers and turned her gaze sideways while her cheeks turned pinkish. Is there anything wrong? Yuam, I got lost and need help. I can accompany you if you want. Oh, that would be much appreciated. He took her suitcase from her grasp and carried it as they walk. Are you on a trip? I was actually appointed to this town's church. You're a nun, huh? She nodded shyly once again looking down on the pavement floor. I am so glad I met such a nice person like you, it must have been divine guidance. The blonde looked up to Issei but this time a smile adorned her face he smiled back and continued their walk towards the only church in Kuo both were enveloped in a comfortable silence but was interrupted by a kid crying in pain the blonde instantaneously went to the kid and saw his scraped knee. Don't cry, it's just a scrape, everything is going to be just fine. She said with a soft voice Issei stood at the background with a smile, his face then turned to shock when he saw her ring glowing a green color and the boy's scrape slowly healing I knew she was different but this takes the cake, I didn't know she possesses a sacred gear. Take care of her, partner. Don't let fallens go after her, she has a rare one, of course, look, your wound's gone, it's all right now. The boy looked baffled but soon turned to happiness. Arigato Oni-chan. He stood up and dusted himself, he gave the blonde a hug and ran off to school. Issei helped her up and said, Well, you have a pretty amazing powers. It's a wonderful power granted by God. And oh, it must be that place. She said, clearly excited to go but her gleeful bearing was spoiled by a phone ringing loudly. Issei swiftly took it out from his right pocket and tapped the answer button. Hello, he greeted, as the call goes on. The caller asked him where he is in. Told him to go to school. Goman, I'm going now. Quote dot dot. Hi. As he ended the call with his classmate, he looks a bit disappointed. What's wrong? The blonde asked. I am sorry but I need to go to school, 
maybe we can meet some other time. He suggested and she nodded her head happily, immediately agreeing. My name is Asia Argento, please call me Asia. I am Hyodo Issei, you can call me Issei. He handed her suitcase back and waved at her goodbye, before he can go. He heard her say something, I am really happy to have met someone as kind as you this quickly after. Arriving in Japan, please visit the church when you find the time. Yeah, I will. He gave her one last smile and then turned the other way, going to Kuo. Academy, she's really a good girl. WH who are you? A tall man with glasses asked while holding a frying pan as a weapon. I was asked to replace Kaneko san tonight since she's double booked. But I don't want a man. I want the cute Kaneko chan. Issei sweat dropped. The summoner finally calmed down after a while and even offered Issei some tea. Oh, thank you. He held it in his hands and took a sip. You're a demon, so you must have a talent. Show me. Talent. Huh. What does Kaneko san usually do? There's cosplay and being held in arms, just like a pretty princess V. He took out a sailor uniform and happily showed it to him. W well, I can produce fire and a little bit of ice. Issei stretched out his right arm and came out a tiny ball of fire from his palm, while an ice cube formed from his left hand. Sugoi. The summoner eyed the two element in awe. You can touch the fire though. Wh what? Do you want me burn my finger off? Issei dismissed the fire and ice and waved his hands defensively. No number number. It's nothing like that. My flames can only burn those I deem as my enemy, he explained, which doesn't seem to convince the man in front of him. Issei took the sailor uniform from the table and encased it in flames. My cosplay. Wait, just look at it first. He did gazed intensely at his burning cosplay and his face soon turned to amazement. That's so cool. How did you do that? He snatched the uniform from Issei's grasp and seized hold of it. Then the flames began to spread to his entire body and only felt comfort and warmth. Quick, take a picture of me. He brought out his digital camera from his pocket that is also in flames. When Issei touched the camera, the flames were immediately extinguished. The summoner repeatedly striked a pose and his posing only ended when he got tired of moving too much. Issei put out the flames and took a fan from somewhere and starts fanning the tired summoner and presented an ice cold water. Then they just talked for a bit, mostly about Drago M. Ball. Thanks, you're a really good summon for a pretty boy like you. Anytime, he exclaimed with a grin. Issei's night ended with him forming a contract with him and went back to the club room to report. The next few days turned out to be normal than what he thought, no. Fallen in sight, it was like they don't even exist, it was quiet, too quiet for his liking. Issei was bored, so bored that he considered skipping class. Why don't you? Diedre asked, cutting him out of his train of thoughts. I might get in trouble you know and the news of me skipping might also. Reach Bushu then it'll be scolded he shot back. Just think of this as scouting the perimeters, since you're so bothered. About those fallen, you're really a bad influence but good idea nonetheless. You're welcome, brat. Issei ignored the last part and sneakily got out of school during their lunch. Braken made his way to the park. There he saw a blonde nun that he immediately recognized, seemingly in deep thoughts, her brows furrowed and lips in a tight line. Asia Sarn. At first, it looks like she haven't realized his presence and is sitting on the park bench with no signs of moving anytime soon. He hollered her name for a couple of times and was able to make her look. Say San, I'm sorry I didn't notice you there. She said while slightly bowing. It wouldn't take a genius to see that she's alone and troubled, and since Issei is with no one else either, he asked her if she would like to join him. For lunch, I would love to, Issei-san. Her eyes gleams with happiness. Asia just sat in her seat with mild confusion as she engages herself in a staring contest with her round-shaped food wrapped in plastic. Um, Asia-san, Issei put two and two together and came to a conclusion that this is the First time she have seen a hamburger. This is how you eat them, Asia Chan. The blonde nun, blushed at the change of honorifics, he then took his own. And took a large bite out of it. I.H. didn't know you could eat it that way. She held her burger with both hands and slowly unwraps it. She took a small bite and then her eyes widen a little. 
Oishij Tilda, Issei just sat there with a grin on his face while watching the blonde. Happily eat her food like it's her first time. Stop staring you perv. I was not, old man. Issei retorted back to the dragon. Just don't make it obvious. Issei ignored him and continued eating, matching Asia's pace. They went, to the arcade after, requested by the blonde who seems so eager to go the moment she finished. Let's play to our hearts content today, Asia Chan. They played every arcade game that piqued their interest, the racing games, shooting games and even the ones for little kids. What this? It looks like one of those machines that have food in them. Issei turned to where Asia pointed at and nodded his head. That's a coin-operated machine with a camera inside, wanna try it? Asia first looks unsure but agreed to treat when Issei gave her a reassuring glance. Look over there and smile. Their first picture looks cute with an adorable. Asia looking at the camera with interest she soon got the hang of it and took a few more with different frame. Design for each picture. I've never had so much fun in my life. Asia Chan, you're exaggerating. Issei said as he waves his right hand in front of him while the other held. His drink. But it's true. She casted her eyes down and walks towards one of the benches nearby and patted the space next to her. Issei took a seat and waited for her to continue. You know, Issei-san, my parents abandoned me right after I was born. I was told I had been found crying in front of a small European town's church. Issei felt bad and placed a hand on her shoulder, she flinched upon contact. But soon relaxed from the hold, returning the smile given to her and resumed her story. When I was eight, a wounded dog, close to death wandered into the church. I prayed as hard as I could and that's when a miracle occurred. Soon afterward, I was taken to a big church where I was ordered to heal. Illnesses and wounds of people coming from all over the world. I I was so happy that my power could help people. A sad smile then twitched its way up to her face. Then, one day, I encountered a man, heavily injured on the floor. But the man I came across was a D-demon, I was branded a heretic because I had the power to even heal demons. Issei came to realization, so that's why she got picked up by Fallens, because she had nowhere else to go. But I never stopped praying to God, expressing my gratitude. The Lord must be testing me, if I can overcome this ordeal, he will make my dream come true someday. Your dream, it'll make a lot of friends, together we'll buy flowers and books and chat. That's my dream. I don't have any friends, you see. She finally looked up at him, adorning a smile with her eyes closed. It'll be your friend, Asia Chan, he said with a serious look while looking. From afar, it didn't last long when he once again looked at her with a shy smile. I mean, aren't we already friends? We chatted and had fun together, after all. He slightly scratched his cheek with his index finger with a blush on. Well, we didn't get to the flowers or books but still. Or is it still not? Enough, but I'm causing you a lot of trouble, Issei-san. No, not at all. And you're my friend and nothing's gonna change that. She gasped, placing both of her hands on her chest, feeling her heart flutter. In happiness after hearing she have someone and slowly smiled with tears. Starting to form on the corner of her eyes. I am happy. Their afternoon together ended with the two of them now parting ways. Are you sure you don't want me to walk you home? Hi. Don't worry about me, Issei-san. Besides, I want to take this time to think about something. Oh, if that's the case, see you. Un, see you, Issei-san. She flung herself onto him and buried her face on his chest, right where his heart is. Issei gently returned the embrace and ruffled her hair once they broke off. Be careful, okay, it'll be fine, it's not dark yet. Issei heaved a sigh and bid her goodbye and walks away with a grin plastered on his face which didn't last long, sh asterisk t. Bushu is gonna kill me. He conjured up a magic circle and hopped on, appearing right outside the old school building. When he was just in front of the clubroom's door, he knocked twice before. Coming in when he heard the president's consent. Maybe she didn't know, school actually just ended earlier. All hopes of surviving dropped to zero when he suddenly felt a murderous intent from someone standing by the window. Issei. She slowly turned around, raising her right hand with a black ball of demonic energy encased in crimson, forming 
Where have you been? He screamed colorful words mentally and his heart starts hammering. Inside. D-Drake. Help. What was our reason? F-C-K-U. D-Drake. You uh. H-H just W went out for some fresh air. Oh. Really. You were gone for hours, Issei. I'm not going to make you tell. Me what you did but never do it again. I am sorry B-U-C-H-O-U. He kneeled down on the ground and bowed. You can't just say sorry then expect for everything to be fine. You didn't even bother to tell me. His scolding lasted for about two hours. Because of your insubordination, you'll be giving out flyers for two weeks. During weekends and you are not allowed to use teleportation whenever. You pleased, you will only walk to the house of your summoner or ride a bike. Rias finished with a huffed. E, that's too much. Please reconsider. Bushu, he said the last part with matching puppy eyes. Rias' eyes softened a little but immediately turned back to its hardened inside. Drake, help. What was our reason? F-C-K-U, Drake. You, uh, I-H-I just W went out for some fresh air. Oh, really? You were gone for hours, Issei. I'm not going to make you tell. Me what you did but never do it again. I am sorry B-U-C-H-O-U. He kneeled down on the ground and bowed. You can't just say sorry then expect for everything to be fine. You didn't even bother to tell me. His scolding lasted for about two hours. Because of your insubordination, you will be giving out flyers for two weeks. During weekends and you are not allowed to use teleportation whenever. You pleased, you will only walk to the house of your summoner or ride a bike. Rias finished with a huffed. E, that's too much. Please reconsider. Bushu, he said the last part with matching puppy eyes. Rhea's eyes softened a little but immediately turned back to its hardened gaze. Well, I guess you'll have to learn to deal with it or perhaps you would rather have it for a month. No, no, no. Sorry for questioning your order, Bushu. It'll do my best. Stand up and do your job now, someone asked for you. Issei saluted and flashed her a toothy grin, bidding the others a see you later and out the door. End of chapter 4, that's the end of the part 1.